Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. Well, I have a guest that you guys have been asking for for a couple years now. She is a female radio pioneer. Girl, I will receive that. You may recognize the voice. It's Taylor Streckner from Wake Up With Taylor. She had a show for many years on Sirius. Now she has her own is it is your own show or is it your podcast? What are you doing right now? Girl, it's a lot and it's confusing and I'm realizing now I have to like really streamline the brand for okay. it to make sense. Do you but you want to have a meeting with Bethany Frankel? You got it. <laughs> we're figuring it out. But um yeah, so it's the Taylor Strecker show, which is a it's a live two hour talk radio show, Monday okay. through Friday. Uh -huh. It's basically what I got fired from, I just gave back to myself. Okay. Um and gave me like a little less time on the air and like better hours. Um, but it's a subscription based show. So okay. it's like the it's like it's like literally baby version of Sirius XM. Without any Got of the it. satellites. We figured it out. And then I have a podcast called Taste of Taylor. Okay. Um and that is free for all to come listen to. Okay. That's where I show you my private pods for free. Ooh. Okay, and let's get <laughs> into all that. Now, when did you start your show on Sirius, which was quite popular? Good God. So it was Wake Up with Cosmo Radio when we launched. So it was oh, yes, for Cosmo that. Magazine. You know Are what? You sure, you weren't. You on know it? what? I think I was. I, I really was, do too. Back when it was Cosmo, I feel like maybe were you doing it like 2012, 13? Definitely. Okay, so yep. I think when I had my books come out. Yep. I had one book come out in 2010. You'll never blue ball in this town again. The other one was my inappropriate life, which was, I believe, 2013, the beginning of 2013, I think. And um, and with those, I did the serious tour. Then, and, and I'm pretty sure I did like a bunch of shows. And that Cosmo sounds very familiar. Yeah, because I feel like it's the first time we've like met met. But I yeah. was like, I feel like you were on the show. Which is like, in and of itself, such a weird thing. That like Sirius is like this high school of like different classrooms where you guys can come do like your entire press junket. Right? Right, yeah. I know, it's kind of genius But anyway, actually. no, it was actually really good for those type of things, you know? Oh, yeah. And then, but then all of a sudden you'd be also be like bumped or the person wouldn't come or whatever. But, um. <laughs> I had diarrhea a lot. Really? No, that was my excuse. Oh. oh. <laughs> I wanted to interview someone. Oh, really? I was like, I have diarrhea. Because no one even questions that. You're right. Yeah. No one's, no one is. And they get like grossed out and nervous and so they just like let but it go. But if you continue to have it so much, then is it like you got to step it up to like irritable bowel syndrome? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now it's just like I have a condition. Whenever I, um like wanted to get out of work or something which was very rare but like more it'd be like an audition or something um i always suggest that people show up back to work with a cotton ball and a band <laughs> at the corner of your arm because no one's gonna fuck with like wow should get some blood drawn exactly like this could be serious that's genius you know i don't know what it is we're waiting to hear <gasps> then you get the second interview, or yep. the, then they have to run more tests. <laughs> and then you get the job, and you're like, bye, nothing was wrong with me, bitch. <laughs> I was going Just miserable. Other interviews. Yeah. Oh, That's my tip. I'm crying. Don't ever be honest that you're looking for a job. Don't ever say, let no. me be honest. No. Well, I had a friend recently that was like, I think I'm going to leave my job, and I'm going to tell them. I was like, don't tell them. Because until Never. you get another job, they're going to keep looking for your replacement. And once you say, once you ever reveal that you have, like, one foot out the door, Forget they're going to be like, keep walking. <laughs> no one's going to be like, well, let me see if we can adjust it. How about Fridays off? Never going to happen. <laughs> How about Fridays off? Never Except if you work for my parents, and in which case that always is what happens. Oh, really? What are your parents you, do? My parent, my dad's an eye surgeon, oh. so they run their own practice, uh -huh. and, like, they'll have people that are, like, <laughs> they work there, like, two days a week. Basically, it's, like, Howard Stern's schedule at the Strecker Eye Center <laughs> for dad. <laughs> okay, so you were there for all these years. Then you became the Taylor Show. Yeah, so it was, okay, so it was Wake Up With Cosmo Radio. Then it was Wake Up With Taylor. Then it now was... Now I want to ask something personal. Please. Does Taylor, does Taylor, does Sirius, Howard Stern taken out of it, Andy Cohen taken out of it, okay. a regular person that has a five-day-a-week show, can you give me a ballpark of what someone like that makes? A thousand percent I can give you a ballpark. Please do. Um, I have no clue. I would say... Low six figures, For and that's a week, and that's if you're a hundred thousand a week. No, <laughs> hundred thousand a month annually. Okay, I'm gonna say, but I'm gonna say six figures. For in my experience, low six. Can figures. we just talk week though? Like, what would you get a week? For I mean, a five day a week. Can show? I get my my calculator? Out and do I mean, the what do you think? Like ten thousand a week. 
Um, I really, no. I actually never broke it down because I'm like new to this whole. Because when I, talk, I I'm doing the math now. When I, when I, I talk to someone that started post maybe, tax or pre tax. <laughs> when I talked to someone a few years ago, and I thought she was very talented, she revealed it was like she was getting like two hundred fifty a show. Then she got bumped up to five hundred dollars a show. Now I, I would think she's getting a decent. I would think it. I think if it's like your your job and you're there every day, five days a week, it's yeah. got to at least be like three or four grand a, a week, don't you think? Try a month after taxes. Does that count? Pre okay, so that's what I wanted to know. I'm just curious yeah. because well, I can just go by my paycheck and what it look like. I mean, so it, it wasn't was, great. People think because it's it's Howard and it's serious, you're making so much money. But like, you and are I think not. people go there and they're attracted because it is more prestigious. You're you're at my place in yeah. Calabasas. I've got Kelly running the camera. You know, when I go and a guest at a serious show, it is kind of nice just to walk right in and have it all ready to go and done. And you're done in the hour. You're not editing it. You're not listening back to it. You're done. Right. So I get that appeal of why someone would want to go there just to, like, be like, okay, all I have to do is just be creative for an hour and I'm out. Right. And and I can say I'm on serious, like, ooh. That's but, really what it's all about. I realized. Yeah. I got into it when people called serious Cyrus. Yes. So I certainly wasn't. Now, well, but Howard actually came after I launched. So I think he was there or maybe right about the same time. But I, I don't think that Howard was there when I made my deal to come in. And it was, yeah, it was. Okay, so it wasn't an hour or two hours. It was a four-hour radio show that they we played music and then and it was a partnership with Cosmo magazine which was the best because Cosmo was like the greatest and yeah. Kate White the editor in chief was so great but then when like Kate was no longer there and then there was like all this like shifting around they moved the show from music and talk to straight talk so four hours straight talk for like yeah I mean I guess it would be if you break it down like Four hundred dollars, maybe a show. So that's like a hundred dollars an hour, right? Right. I mean, I'm really bad at math, so I can't. Yeah, be but totally but also, off. it's not like you can do anything else. And that's still a great job. I'm sure there's people listening to them be like, I would do that in a hot second. Of course. But I was just. But it's to... also living in New York City is so yeah. expensive. And I was just sort of curious, like what something like that. It so... was it was shockingly low and disappointing. Uh -huh. I was kind of like a thing that was promised. And trust me, I had to build up to that over a decade. Mm -hmm. So I started off at like. Anyone listening, you probably make right now what I made my first year doing a national radio show for the number one women selling magazine in the world. Kind of crazy. And how did they, how did you even get started in it? Girl. So my, first of all, how old are you? You look so young. Tell me how old you think I look. I mean, 32. I love you. 36. Okay. Okay. Um, I, mean, I, I guess 32 because I'm like. You have to be over 30 with what you're telling me, but you have a very young face. Thank you. Well, I like to, um, I tell myself that I keep the weight on. Um, it's for the for the baby chub. So it's, <laughs> it works. But yeah, hey, my mother always said, it's your ass or your face. You decide <laughs> which matters more to you. So I'm going with the face for now. Yes. Yeah. My summer not bod is, uh, it's for my youthful energy that I sacrifice it for. I also hate working out and I'm lazy as shit and I like junk food. So okay, good. there's that. Um, Enjoy your life. Right? And like, I'm with a person now that doesn't care. They like, they're there. Chubby chaser. So it's just like, it encourages me to eat Chinese at three in the morning. It's, it's the life. Right, I want to get into that whole thing because your love life's very juicy too. Yes. Okay. So. How did you get chosen for this job? I had place? just graduated from college. Where'd you go? I went to Ithaca College. So, okay, you know, they like, they, they, it's kinesthetic learning. They teach you how to get into the biz right away. Okay. Um, and my best friend and roommate at the time was the receptionist at Sirius. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. So I, we would party with like a lot of the guys that worked on like Shade 45. Yeah. For real. We would like went to Vegas with them. It was... Those were the dark years, yeah. but still fun. Um, and then we heard through the grapevine that they were launching radio for women by women under the umbrella of Cosmo Radio. So they were looking for female talent that could represent the brand, but like didn't overshadow the brand. Right. So they were looking at Mandy Moore, which is so random. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, so Mandy's not going to work out. So I wonder if she regrets her decision. She's not even doing anything now. Good point. Yeah, only on like the biggest <laughs> show ever. Yeah, right? She must be so sad I'm she sure missed out on that. Her, she was like, why didn't I take that serious radio show? For $45,000 a year. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, the beginning was rough. Those negotiations were no fun. But um, I, so anyway, so they asked my roommate to audition, and they had seen me at a party with her, 
and I guess heard my voice and said, why don't you bring your friend in? Because they had another successful show. Um, do you know Kavino and Rich? They're from, mm-hmm. yeah, okay. So they were on Maxim Radio. Yeah. Best guy friends. So they were like, why don't you just, um, why don't we just like recreate what they have? They're real friends. You guys are real friends. She's good on air. You have a good voice. Let's give it a shot. Yeah. So we auditioned for like, I don't know, a couple months, a few months, like written auditions, like recorded auditions. You know what's interesting is like, it used to be you have a voice for radio. Now that everybody has a podcast, literally, it doesn't really matter what your voice is. It's not even a thing. <laughs> like, I'm obsolete. Though, however, <laughs> I though however, I do think people will say, I like your voice, it's relaxing, or, you know, that person's voice is too whiny. I mean, some people I do hear that about other things, and <sighs> and I think, you know, it's it, and in some ways it doesn't really matter. It's really, I think, about the content and the following, but... yeah. It's interesting that that kind of just, like, no one ever says that anymore. No. It's, like, was a thing, and it's, like, not a thing. Yeah. You know? Like, it, like 10, 15 years ago, that would have never happened. It would have, yes. it would have been, like, what's your social media following? Yes. You know? And yeah, it would have been... This was, like, let me hear your voice, and or would you like to go to a radio show? Hey, how do you guys do it? You know, like... <laughs> Literally. So, we auditioned, and I ended up getting it. She did not get it, but she's okay. Oh, my God. Because she is Nicole Ryan from The Morning Mashup on Sirius XM Hits 1 on Channel 2. So, bitch is fine. And was making all the money there now. Was now, it... they're all, all of a sudden, they're paying. Was it weird between the two of you that you got it and she didn't? Soup's weird. And she was <laughs> so amazing considering, because I would have been such a bitchy brat. I don't um, think there's a worse story than that, actually. Yeah. That you had the thing, you brought your friend in, yep. and they're like, we'd rather just have the friend. Isn't that, though, this, the, isn't that always what they say, never bring a friend to an audition? Because they'll always get it over you. I never brought friends to audition, but I always thought when I'd see friend, when I'd see other girls see their friends at the audition, for a long time I thought, my God, they're so nice to each other. Isn't this weird that they're both up for the same part along with me? But then I realized, especially for acting, not so much for the radio, but for acting, yeah. it's like either you're it or you're not. So it's like, yep. it really isn't a personal thing. It's like either the, you're the vision that they thought or you're not, and you shouldn't really take that part personally. But um, in radio, <laughs> yeah, but like, but yes, but like with with radio and hosting and comedians and stuff, I think it's a little more of a personal where you could just bring a few more elements to get the job so well jokes on me because she's kicking my ass and making five times as much money well as I, I, I had now. a situation that kind of happened and I had to like be a Christian about it really what <laughs> I had be a Christian so when I was on Chelsea lately she had a deal where they could like pay for a couple pilots a year uh-huh. under Chelsea so originally she had this like she thought it would be funny if there was a show with Ross Matthews and Guy Branham because they're two kind of different types of gay guys. Yes. Okay. And, um, but they're two gay guys. And so I was like, he was my office mate. He came in like two years after I'd been there. So I was a little bit like, all right, well, good for you. I'm not a gay guy. So, right. you know, and then they, they call him in like two years later and they, no, no. Yes. And they, no, they tell me, they call me in and they go, listen, they don't want the two gay guys now. They want Ross with a girl. And we thought, like, you'd be great because you guys have a chemistry and everything. And I go, okay, well, have you told Guy? They're like, not yet. So then I go back into my office. And they're like, call up Guy. And Guy has to go. And then they basically say that. So then he had to come back. And he was like, you know, hey, if it was going to be anybody and I'm not a girl. And if he wants a girl, you're a girl. And I'm like, I was sad first, but if they wanted a gay guy, I'm not a gay guy. So like, okay. So then we start to do the pilot, Ross and I, and I absolutely love Ross. And we're trying, we're auditioning, like who's going to be our like news guy. Cause it's going to be like a mini Chelsea lately, basically right. with the two of us with like news stories and stuff. And this black guy comes, I remember he, he, did his thing and he was good and I'm like so I lean over to Ross I go do you think he's gay or not and he goes straight but with a history of abuse and it was the <laughs> fucking I like cried laughing like I was like this is the fucking funniest thing I've ever heard so we do it we do the pilot and I felt like for me I was really rushed because I still had to produce Chelsea lately but he was like at the offices all day like working on his stuff and so then literally that day like I still like hadn't had my stuff but it was it was good. I remember I showed my mom and she was like, mm, like I could tell she didn't like love it. But I I was like open to it. And I remember they showed me the graphics and I thought they looked really cheesy, but I didn't speak up. Yeah. Things like that because I'm like, 
Who am I to say what my show graphics should look like? God forbid you have an opinion about your show that's going to represent you, right? No, I don't want to hurt this guy, <laughs> graphic guy who drinks wine at his desk and is like just annoyed that I even stopped by. No, I don't want to do that. So, so anyway, time goes on, time goes on. And I'm pretty sure like, we're, you know, the longer it takes to hear, it's not good. I get the call at the end of the day. Hey, can you come into my office? And I was like, okay. And they're like, well... And my EP, I like him, but he was not the sweetest bedside manner. And he's like, he goes, okay, so they're not going with the show. And I go, well, I kind of figured that. He's like, um, you tested horribly. Oh, well, we don't have to talk about this now. The show's not happening, so thank he you. He goes, but Ross did it. So they're just going to pursue a show with Ross alone. <gasps> oh, my, this business is so fucked up. And I go, okay. Now, I love Ross, and I love to this day. So I'm like, fuck. So then I start to drive home. And I have to call him. To congratulate him? Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, hi, honey. I go, <laughs> hi, Ross. And he goes, and I go, well, I just want to say that if me doing this show convinced them that you can do a show by yourself, then I did my job. Oh. Because you can do a show by yourself. And and he's like, well, I disagree. I'm like going to cry <laughs> thinking about it. He's like, I disagree. I think they made a mistake. But da da da. Anyway. It's... But it was a weird, I just realized that was such a weird thing. Of, and it's like, there's nothing you can do. No. You know, and it's like. And you can't be mad at your friend. So, right? I mean, like on the no. outside. <laughs> of course they're going to be In mad, your mad. dreams, you can and kill I want, them. You know, because I want, I want his show to go. I want him to hire 30 people. I want, you know, that yep. to get a bigger thing. And then it got worse. No. I just remember the worst part about oh, the story. No. <laughs> so the Ross show starts going, okay? And they're having like, you know, people pop in like. Just like we had panelists, but a different crew. Not the same as Chelsea. Different right. people, so you could like see different faces on that show. I think I'm like remembering the show. Yeah, it was like once a week. It was in our studio, but it had a different set. Like, and it was like, flip it was, it was the like the circular table, high up, seating. Something, and... yes. It's yes. just a little different than ours. And, um, and that same EP, still wish him well in life, comes in and goes, so what we need for Ross, you know, is like a co-host. And I'm like, oh my God, they're coming back for me. They're like, we need a younger Heather McDonald. No! Yes! I, no, this business is... This we is need a younger Heather McDonald. Do you know anyone like you but younger that can do like all the characters and are obsessed with pop culture? Do you know who Robert Verdi is? No, who's right. that? Robert Verdi was like big in the fashion world. He's actually has like a cameo in The Devil's Wear Prada, which is like means the world to me. Yes. He's hysterical. He's super talented. He's amazing. He's like, he's great. And he has such sour grapes over this industry because of shit like that. And he said, I can tell you on auditions how many times they're like, we need a younger Robert Verdi. He's like, I'm fucking Robert Verdi. <laughs> I'm like, dude, gain some weight and you'll be good. But I, well, the reason he said, <laughs> the reason I thought that was so funny is years ago, when I was like 20, you know, in my mid 20s, and I'm trying to get an agent, I'm talking to this guy who posed as a comedian, but he just really wanted to fuck me, but he uh. did think I was funny. <laughs> he goes, Heather, you are your star. One day in the breakdowns, it's gonna say Heather McDonald type. Just trust me. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh my God, this moment happened, but so, in such a fucked up way. So even though it's stung, though, you're like, oh my God, I've made it. I've made it. <laughs> He's looking for a younger Heather McDowell at the time. So now they're working on David, um, um, sorry, what is, why am I like blanking? David Letterman? Blonde hair. Blonde slate. No. Spade. 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 Got it. That was weird. <laughs> David Spade. They're working on his new show, which I'm thrilled, and I think it'll be funny. It's on Comedy Central, and he loves pop culture. Right? Yeah. And they're looking to hire. Now, I, at this point, would not want to be a staff writer on a show. I'd love to make an right. appearance, whatever. But <laughs> he wrote me again saying, you know, no. it, we need a Heather McDonald type that, like, you know, loves pop culture and blah, 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 blah. And I go, unfortunately, she doesn't exist. You asked me 10 years ago, okay? I'm grooming my 13-year-old to Literally. transition and maybe, Literally. but he's a little too young right now, okay? Oh. I've not found her yet, but oh, I'm looking. happy to meet her, and we can do a mother-daughter wine country show. <laughs> Is this so, why celebrities have kids? I don't... It's, for, it's just to patch the best Jesus. George. Yes, and he gets some free shit and oh keep that storyline going. Oh, my God. 
This, yep. Getting back to you. This well, no, it's a weird, long history. story, but it's a story I've never told. So congratulations to me. Okay, so so you then start doing the thing, but it was weird with your friend. When and we were roommates. I got wicked skinny. It was the best. What, I was what, like barfing out of was like, it just like so much tension. Guilt. Like you walk in and is it just like refridge shut? It walk was, out of the room, no talking. A Let's, note saying what you owe for the cable. What is it like? Well, she was always fucking up the cable bill, so okay. that was small <laughs> responsibility. That's another thing kids don't have to worry about today. <laughs> right? The splitting of the bills. Oh. All it is is rent now. Everybody has their own sling TV and, and their I'm, own phone and their own thing. You don't know what it was like when you have to go and be like, um, I don't have a grandmother in Connecticut. <laughs> what? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> the good old days. Yes. Okay, go on. So, yeah, I mean, it was it was uncomfortable. She tried really hard to, like, not be that girl. But, I mean, yes. cut to, like, when I did my launch show, it's, like, not that this means anything to some millennials, but, like, Natasha Bedingfield was there performing live, which was, like, it was at the height of the hills. Oh, my God, I have a Natasha Bedingfield story. No! Tell me. I'll tell you it really quick. So... <laughs> this is amazing story time. It's about you. We're getting back to you. No, I like this. This is what I do. I make people tell stories about themselves. Okay, so <laughs> it's Chelsea's birthday, and she just started to invite every single person that's been a guest on the show. And we're all going to Mexico. And Natasha Benningfield was suddenly like her best friend. Stop. And she sang happy birthday or something. And then we all get in a car, like a van that was taking us to a nightclub. Yeah. And the two bookers at the Tonight Show that eventually came on our show were there. And one of them, knowing that she was in the car, jokingly, but she didn't realize the joke, was like, who? Saying, um, happy birthday. Like, that was awful. Like, <laughs> ha ha. But it, like, totally didn't go over. And she was, like, furious. She takes herself very seriously. I remember we interviewed her and she was like, she was fully engaged, like, planning her wedding, and she was refusing to talk about it because she, like, had a... A deal with people? You got it! Yes! It's so crazy! And I I'm like... I I had a deal with people. Me but... too. I Gretchen saw... Rossi has a deal with people about her baby. Please tell me you're following Gretchen Rossi's baby journey. I'm not. I have to. I didn't even know she was pregnant. She got pregnant. She'd been, tr she'd been she on Dr. Oz still? for, like, three years t tr talking about her fertility journey. <laughs> really? And... So I'm very happy that she is she and Slade. So she and Slade are the nicest people you'll meet at a party. You're I've, at a social event. I've heard they're amazing and so, but like you can't help but tell the truth about the way they come off. I mean, it's it's a it's a fun thing to watch, okay? But yes. genuinely, like if you're gonna see them in a cocktail party, they're gonna be so incredibly nice. They're gonna be fun. Like with me, they're always like fun to talk to. Yeah. He has a huge camera with incredible filters and stuff. And he'll take photos of her throughout the night, and you can get in it, and you can get the same face. <laughs> so it's like I—he's the—he is the taught. He created Instagram husband. Like, <laughs> if there is like a history of Instagram husband, it's Slade. Okay. Now they've never gotten married. Whatever finances, ex-wife's, I don't know. But she got. She's pregnant, and her whole career now is incredible social media products and all that. So I don't hate it. But this baby, and if I suddenly like had like a merry type of old mom i suddenly got pregnant i would be all over the free shit too i would be like this baby's gonna work yes. this baby's gonna be exploited i think you could exploit a baby till about four and then, then the wrong. products <laughs> then the products start to oh, slow down then people don't give a shit no then it's like mm, who cares about your blocks but like strollers and clothes oh, yeah. and bottles yes. and Nipple cream and like it just you know so like focus on that for a few years okay. Well, she's like a little Barbie doll anyway. So her the the baby shower was a wedding and they did it for people and it is like the videos that she's showing and she's good. She gives everybody credit that gave her the stuff. Yeah. But it was they do a mother father to the baby in the tummy <laughs> dance. And smoke comes out from the ground. Stop. Yes. She's in a full length gown. They're twirling around. And even some gay so guy. So a wedding even baby some, shower. Even some gay guy who like filmed it or something goes, oh my God, the baby shower, not a wedding. Like, <laughs> it's amazing. That's what it takes to get people deals. I don't, I don't hate it. Okay, so go on. She had a people deal go. 
Who are the people deal? I don't even Natasha remember. Natasha Bedingfield. Oh, right. Okay, so like, it was a big to-do, right? And poor Nicole was sitting there at the receptionist desk as the receptionist. And she <laughs> smiled through it, and she, you know, she was a fucking champ, okay? And she... that was not easy. But we, we did come up with this plan where it was like, for, so in the very beginning, she was like, how about you don't do it? And just, like, threatened to not do it. And I was like, girl, I have no power. Threatened to not do it without your best friend. Yes. Okay. And I was like, I think I have more. First of all, I quit my job. So I am now jobless. Second of all, and this is my only option. I said, second of all, I think I have more power going in there and, like, ruining all my auditions. And then being like, see? Can't do it without Nicole. Oh, with the chemistry test. Yes. So that's what I did for a while. And they said to me, Taylor, we know what you're doing. Nicole's not going to get the job. And I was like, damn so it. So then who'd you get? Oh, uh, I got this girl named Tia, and she was a friggin' nightmare, and she's still, like, a person that exists, like, hey, girl, hey, but, like, we did not get along well. She caught, had constant migraines, bless her heart. Yes, that's a real thing. Along she with was, diarrhea. But she, well, that, yeah, my fake thing. But she was, like, popping, like, some heavy-duty prescriptive pills, like, on there, and then falling asleep. And I was like, queen. And then wanted equal billing, and I was like, listen, I will carry your like migrainey ass on my back, but you will not get to sit here and talk to me like right. you're my boss. So we did not get along. I went How through, long did that last? I don't even know. That was all a blur. I went through so many co-hosts. There was a while where I was doing it all by myself. And then I finally found my co-host Kenny. He was my producer. We ended up being co-hosts for like pff, six years together, seven years. And we built this incredible show with this amazing audience. And then And, and then that became the Good morning with Taylor. So that was Wake Up with Taylor. Yes. And that, but then the, that was like, it was, I think it was still, it was, for a while, it was still affiliated with Cosmo. Then that editor in chief left, a new one came in, and then they kind of like, it, it was just like their partnership without us, like just right. dissolved. But they did get rid of Cosmo Radio, which meant that a lot of us were on the chopping block. So right. I was on the chopping block. My friend Patrick Maher was on the chopping block. Recognize that name? Oh, that's Stassi's ex. Uh-huh. And that's the connection to Stassi. Precisely. Yeah. Okay. So that's how you and Stassi met through him? With Sir Patrick, yeah. And, and she, through me interviewing her. And serious. then Stassi then left Vanderpump for a while to come to New York. And that's when we became friends because she had no friends and she was living in the legit shittiest apartment I've ever seen in my life with Patrick. It was the crappiest apartment because... Did he have a man Sirius bun? Sirius didn't pay us anything. Did so, he have a man bun back then? Um, No, he did not. Okay. He just had like long, like... Um, South Carolina football bro locks. Now, what did you think of his performance last season as her boyfriend hitting on Lisa Vanderpump's ass <sighs> and all the stuff he said and how he'd correct her vocabulary and... Cringeworthy is the is the phrase I have to is use. Is that the Patrick you knew? No. Or do you think he got a bad edit? He, I can't say he got a bad edit because I really do believe that what you give is what you give on a show. You know, we can't, like, make him... Sexually harassed Lisa Vanderbump. Right, yes. But to know Patrick, he's always in bro mode, you yeah. know? And that was, like, his shtick on the air. And it worked for Cosmo Radio, because he was, like, the perpetual frat boy that ever girl wanted to, like, be, like, mistreated by and fuck. Right. So that was his shtick. But he, like, shticked Lisa Vanderpump. He was, like... <laughs> Not understanding his audience. Do you know what I mean? Right. It's like, she's the queen. She's the boss. Like, everyone worships her. We, we, the audience, all look up to her. Right. And you're degrading her. And that's like, and even though you might think that she's like a controlling, manipulative bitch that sells um, stories oh. to uh, Radar Online. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm just saying. We'll see. Like, go on. I'm yeah. still confused. She passed that test, you know. I know. <laughs> um, and wasn't it? And it wasn't it crazy that <laughs> Kyle's daughter's friend was it? <laughs> was it that bananas? Kyle's daughter's friend was robbed, and all the construction workers went there. Yeah, at I love the that. exact same time. Just yeah. say production told you. Yeah. Just admit it. It's so it's stupid. Amazing. Um, but yeah. So, but I think he didn't realize that talking so down to her. I think he thought like. I think he had a bad impression of her, like, as a boss, right? Yeah. And maybe he had heard through the grapevine from other cast members in his relationship with Stassi that they also felt that way at right. times. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yes. So I think in his mind he was like, I'm sticking up to the boss. But it's like, it didn't play off that well. And it what was, has happened bad. to his life since? I honestly don't know. We um, The last time we spoke was, um, it was... Uh, <laughs> 
Cabo Gate when Stassi had the meltdown, like very Sex and City style. Oh, yes. For the Mexico she, trip. Yes. And she went with Rachel Bryan. Yep. And I loved their Instagram stories. I know Rachel, so I was like, this is so brilliant because they They're walked so good. into the bedroom with the roses and she did the Sex and City movie from the one. She's like, this is going to kill her. And I was like, <laughs> I, go, I love that you. You know, made the best of this situation. It made it entertaining for all of us. Yeah. But yeah. Even though her heart was breaking. So right before they were supposed to go to Cabo, Stasi and Patrick, he just was like... They got into an epic fight, which was like, that was their M.O. Like, yeah. um, I, no, that was his M.O. I will, I will say this, yeah. like, Patrick being friends with him, we never, we had one fight, but that fight was epic. And I was like, oh man, I would never... Like, I'm happy to be his friend. As if you mean, like, screaming back and forth? He's just, like, once he has his mindset on something, he has his mindset on it. Like, it's like, you did it, and there's no talking out of it. And, like, you just have to hope he calms himself down, or else, like, it it could go on for eternity. Yeah. It was like, we, like, when I got in that one fight with him, I was like, oh, wow, we're not going to be friends anymore. And then we were able to recover, I think, with the help of Stassi, actually. He was really mad at me, because I was, like, shooting a reality TV show with Nicole from Morning, from, um, from Sirius, my friend, the front desk What happened with that? It went absolutely nowhere, like most things in this industry. Um, but he was so pissed that we were doing reality, because he Ooh. hates reality TV so much. Yeah. And he was like, I can't believe this, he said. <laughs> no, I, see, this is Juicy Scoop. You get yes. me to say the stories. Yeah. He's like, I would expect this from Nicole, but not from you. And I was like, what? To be on a reality TV show? like It's, a, it's, it's like, exposure for what you're doing. Yeah, and he was just so... like pissed and he was like there's Stassi's context I was like Stassi was in the background of the stream like I don't care I don't care like she's friends with like people who are producers on Vanderpump like their job is to like cope with other shows he was just so I think so the Vanderpump producers pursued you to do like a a sizzle reel well what happened was when Stassi moved to New York and was totally like off Vanderpump right we were like what are you gonna do and so I said why don't you pitch to Bravo I don't know, but it's like when Whitney Port came to the city, it's right, like Stassi yeah, yeah. comes to New York, we'll Spin get off. you like an hour show on Sirius because, you know, the president will give a show to any celebrity. Right. And you can do an hour a week, like, but this yeah. is before she had the podcast. Right, so she's yeah. like, I can't. Anyway, I'm like, do an hour and then it should be about you working with your boyfriend, working with your friends. I'm your friend. And yes, yeah. I was like executive producing and pitching it to her. And she was like, that's great. And one of the producers was there singing there for it. That was like one of 10 ideas. Right. And then of course she ends up going back to Vanderpump because they're not letting her go. Yeah. And that one producer was like, I still want to do that radio show even without Stassi would can we pursue that who can we like cast and so we started working on it and so nicole because mm-hmm. you know nicole brought me into sirius so i'm always looking for opportunities to pay it back oh, to God, nicole even that score you got it so <laughs> we started doing this reality show together and patrick was fucking so mad at me i think he was mad because i think even though stassi was back on vanderpump he was trying to like not turn her against but like say to her reality tv's bad so then if somebody who's good, me, is also in the world of bad, then he's, like, losing the battle against the biggest brand in the world, which is reality television. He just sounds, like, he bitter, hate, he bitter, jealous. He like, just hated reality TV. It's, like, it's it couldn't, like, it's that simple. He hates watching it. He hates being on it. How did they even meet it. Patrick and Stassi? Um, I interviewed her for season one of Vanderpump with Jax. And then she said, oh, my God, I'm such a fan of the show. And we're also huge fans of Patrick's show. I think he's my soulmate. And then months later, he was like, this hot blonde chick is DMing me on Twitter. And I, he said, she's from some Vanderpump. And I said, is her name Stassi? And he said, yes. And I said, date her. Because I wanted to be her best friend. Voila, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Social climbing at its best. So that's when I got out of working at Sirius XM Radio. And where is he now? <laughs> does Patrick still have a show? So he's still with SiriusXM. Um, he's in sports now. So when Cosmo Radio was done, okay. kaput, we got we got moved over to Stars, which like Jenny McCarthy's on right, now, yeah. Maria Nunos, but they weren't on it yet. It was like Stars with a whole lot of non, non no stars. Now, I when I Patrick is one of those people that I put in a pool with not the worst, the worst of the reality show men fallout is Jason Hoppy. He is King B. He's coming back, girl. King B, most hated person. What do you mean he's Wait, coming back? Isn't he coming back to the Hills reboot? No, Jason Hoppy is Bethany Frankel. Oh, Jesus, worst, sorry. Sorry, worst... I'm so excited about the Hills. I'm sorry, okay. Jason Hoppy. Jason yes. Hoppy is, Beth- is, the, is the worst ex-husband in the world. Okay. Yes, he is. Have you been reading their transcripts from their... What's the latest? Oh, God. The, the recent I'm... one was that his lawyers were trying to bring in footage from the show as, like, evidence. And the judge was like, 
no, it's edited. Like, yeah. they're just, they're like, him and his lawyer just seem like, the oh. most, they're like ridiculous carny folk. Well, they brought up um, the Instagram followers, her Instagram. She gave more about her Instagram followers. Yeah. And it's like, Instagram is part of our business. Yeah. Like, shut up. And so she's like, no, they're, I have, you yeah, have my Instagram followers, yeah, who, who buy my skinny, skinny girl jeans and alcohol. Which pay like, your rent, yeah. motherfucker. So, yeah. Uh, so I feel like Patrick, too. Because mm. I imagine JC, Jason Hoppy out at a bar, okay, in New York City. And whether he hits it off with a girl or not, that God forbid we find one girl in New York City that has never heard of Real Housewives, her <laughs> friend or sister will. Yes. And then she'll be like, who are you bringing to, um, who are you bringing to Father's Day? I mean, this great guy, his name's J- Jason, and he's going through a really ugly divorce, but, oh, well, that's great. Well, I'm so happy for, dun, 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 there comes that face. Every, all the sisters going to be like, you cannot date Jason Hyde. He will take your red skirted girl fridge and claim it as his own. Like, you <laughs> cannot. And so, with Patrick. But Patrick is the opposite, because he's not like, I feel like Jason is so, like, but don't milking you, her. Don't you think, though, if okay. Jason's out... Or dating somebody, there's going to be enough girls that are in this age range that they're going to be like, you cannot date that dick. Like we watched him be a dick. Yeah, I'm sure. To our girl on our favorite show. I'm sure, but the thing is, is that so when people ask me about this, because he is, I haven't talked to him so haven't talked to him since the whole thing happened with Stassi and uh-huh. him breaking. That, that was the final breakup. I was there for many breakup or many like fights to breakups, yeah. but that was. The final one. And I remember I, I texted him and I was like, hey, I'm just reaching out. This was when, like, she was doing her Instagram stories and, like, shit was being covered on, like, Daily Mail. Right. People. Like, TMZ. Everywhere. And so I reached out and I was like, hey, like, boo. Um, just want to see how you're doing. And he wrote me back, like, I don't even know what you're talking about. And I'm like, sir. Like, if you want to say to me, like, for whatever reason, I don't trust you and right. I'm not going to share my intimate, like, emotions with you, I'd rather him just, like, say that to me. But but he was like, he kind of was like, he was J-Lo who? He was like, what? I don't even know what you're talking about. And I was like, okay, well, when you're Who's ready. J-Lo who? Um, when Mariah Carey was asked of who J-Lo, like, oh, what do you think yes. about J-Lo? And she's like, J-Lo who? And he was like, break up what? I don't know what you're talking about. I was like, oh. you and your girlfriend of like a bajillion years, are, you're, this is it. It's done. It's on the news. And he <laughs> was not really like acknowledging it. So I was like, listen, when you want to talk, like I'm here. And well, that was a while ago. So I wouldn't say like we're not friends, but I mean I guess I picked a side or I yeah I I, I leaned heavily more towards the girl side, but I've yeah. I've always just said like what you saw on that show was a person who doesn't like reality TV and didn't want to be on a show on a reality television show, right? And he was acting out. It was like the worst version of him, like, like a bad kid. It was like him things. on a, a bad day. It was like the one fight that we ever got into was yeah. like the worst fight. That was his entire season. Was yeah, like him fighting with. Everybody in his worst fight. So I can't say he got a bad edit, but I will say he was just in a, like, that's not him from a 360 perspective. Well, that's good to hear. Now, what happened with the ending of the serious show, and what is your perspective of that? Um, so the serious show, um, I got fired. <laughs> How did they tell you? They called me on a Saturday. Savage wrangling. Yep, I knew it was coming. Because be when they called, I was like, ugh, cause that's how they do it. I was at series for 12 plus years. I know how they fire people. They don't tell you you're getting fired. And then on the weekend, they call you and they fire you. And they never let you come back and do a goodbye show. It's Oh, you yeah. know how they would fire people on Chelsea lately? How? They, um, whoever was getting fired, they wouldn't tell this person, but they'd tell everybody else. They'd say, you might want to leave earlier today on a Friday. And then everybody would leave. Right as everyone was leaving, then they'd call the person. Wow. Well into the office. So fertile. Why do they have to be so, like, well, inhumane? I think Just it's, people. I think it's an HR thing. Like it's They don't want thing. you stealing stuff. They don't want it to be embarrassing. They don't want someone to do a scene. So with everybody like being McGuire. gone, yeah, with everybody being gone, then you can't, like, throw a scene. You just have to, like, leave. Right. So I don't really blame the way it's done, but it's, you know. But I remember with my one friend that was getting fired, it was, like, that day. She comes in and she's like, are they getting fired? I'm like, there is no way. No way. What are you talking about? She, But she had gotten little seeds in the last six months, which she hadn't shared with me. Yeah. You know, of like, you don't seem happy. You know, that kind of stuff. So, then I was just like, I'm happy! Then <laughs> 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 you have to really act happy. You know, like. So, I was like, there's no way. my job! And, and then, sure morning. enough, but we all knew, and we were like, 
you know, saw her after we all got drinks after, like we were like waiting in the parking lot. Like we were like not like <laughs> abandoning. But so they call you and they say, ding ling ling. Hello. <laughs> I'm you. Hello. Trying to do a scratchy voice. Hello. Hello. No, I got a text. Hey, can you call me in five minutes? So I was driving out to the Berkshires to get to be an advertiser you. for the show, which my boss knew and set me off being like, good luck getting the advertiser, you dick. Anyway, he was my boss of like three months. You know the when like, and you did know. You, but did you stop at Dorinda's on the way home? Girl, you know I wanted to. <laughs> I'm like, Dorinda, I need something to distract me from my Welcome life. Welcome to the Berkshires! It was. <laughs> You're so good at all of them. Okay, oh, by so the way, the your Barbie doll thing, stuff. Yeah. I mean, a girl, I can't. I love you. Kelly and I have created a nightmare for ourselves. Oh, I love <laughs> The outfits are so in in intricate. Who's sewing them? So I have a juicy <laughs> scooper that, like, first of all, she just out of the blue mailed me without contacting me or anything. My first, which was the Lisa Rinna leopard duster, just took it apart <laughs> herself. And I was like, this is amazing. And she's like, what about this? And then I started being like a designer where I like snapped a photo of Erica Jane and was like, I know this is going to look complicated, but is there anything you can <laughs> I know that next week her, her sound goes out. And I just would like to feature that Erica Jane moment. Like That outfit was hella intricate. Yes, she's, in, so intricate. She, she lives in Kansas. I can't say that word. And she's a juicy scooper. And uh, I mean, I, I, it's great. So like, you know, but I, but literally I had to like, I had to call, I, I texted her and I was like, do not worry about Halloween costumes. <laughs> We're skipping this week. I'm oh, traveling. I want to see Rinna as, as Erica. I'm like, no, this, this woman is going to like, lose her mind. I'm like, no, no, no. You're like, like, make sure you get the blue contacts. Yes. I'm like, just work <laughs> on the reunion looks of New York, like, next, but whatever. But, um, yes, exactly. Like, uh, that was, okay, so you're driving to the Berkshire to see, see Dorinda and get the ad, and what happened? <laughs> you're to, yep, and um, they text, call me in five minutes. So I'm like, I looked at my girlfriend, Taylor, and I said, I'm getting fired. You're a girlfriend named Taylor, too? Yes, yeah, so narcissistic and I, so gay. One of my best <laughs> friends is named Heather. No. Yes. You guys should become lovers. We were freshman year, <laughs> freshman year. She, we were two of eight Heathers in a class of 100 oh, at our high school. Oh, my God. It's like every Heather from every Catholic school all graduated. They were the only Heathers, and then they all came to the same school, and it was the Heathers. The, and the little Heathers. The Heathers came out. Okay, so you and Taylor. So we're driving, and I'm like... I'm going to get fired. And you know that pit in your stomach. Yes. Ugh. And so I... Now, was there any warning? Taylor goes like this to me. You're not getting fired. So if that's an indication of, like, how how much I... Sh like, I, I didn't, like... It wasn't like I, like, set my studio on fire or anything like that, where she's like, oh, girl, you'll get fired. It was yeah. like, you're not getting fired. So what led up to it? To play devil's advocate for the company that fired me. Yes. Because I think it's the fair thing to do. Yes. But, um, so contracts are so detailed and anchored in, in intricate. Kit. Kit. There we go. And it's almost like, you're, like how many contracts have you signed where, like, do you know everything that you sign? Like, right. every in and out clause? No. I think a lot of the things, too, are there are loopholes in the event that they want to get rid of you. Companies need to have a reason to get rid of you. Right. So if they're looking to get rid of you and you give them a reason, even in the fine print of the contract, they're going to use that and they're going to take it and they're going to run with it. Okay. That is my interpretation of what happened. It was so what like, was the reason? What was the loophole? Um. So I, like, would do, you couldn't do a lot of work outside of series. No podcasting. Like, if you want to do, like, a video series, you had to get their approval. And every time I got something, they would say, no. Mm -hmm. I actually got asked to go on the panel for Chelsea yes. lately, uh -huh. like in the very beginning, because right. Nicole was yeah. actually on it. Yeah, we had radio people, and, and we had, yes, we definitely, in the, in the beginning, we didn't always have all comics. Yeah. So we had, like, you know, fun personalities and radio people, too. And yeah. my boss didn't, at the time, so I had, like, 18,000 bosses, because you know yeah. how, like, corporate America, just like, it's like management, they just turn them out. Yeah. And, um, and she, I heard through the grapevine, through Patrick. Yeah that he found out that one of our bosses was shutting down all these extra offers we were getting to do, like, more promotion and promote ourselves and the show. Right. I think it was, like, a, this. I hate to say this because it's, it's so, like, girl, but I think it was, like, a jealousy co and competition. Like, she was the boss but also wanted to be on air. Yes, I've had that, too. And yeah. she actually eventually gave herself a show, which was fucking terrible. And so when she would air check me, I was like, go air check yourself. What does air check mean? Like, they sit down and, like, you listen to the show and critique it. Like, oh. this was good, this was that. And I was like, oh. go listen to your show, and then we'll yeah. talk about my show. Yeah. Um, that's So then maybe that's why I got fired for oh, being so. a disrespectful twat. Did, really? No, maybe. that was, okay, like, a decade was before. Thing? Okay. So um, I got to go. Uh, so I so the one thing I could do was these like retreats with the listeners, where I like okay. go away with them. Right. Whatevs. And 
I did one retreat on my own, but I was actually doing it with somebody who had worked at Sirius. Okay. And this person worked in a managerial position. So they knew the ins and the outs of the company. Right. So they give me, they literally gave me a script, okay, yeah. to like read, like, here, oh, hey guys, I'm doing another retreat. Right. But it's a different one than before, and here's what it's going to be like. We're going to do this, this, this. And I remember getting the, the script and going, oh, this feels like too detailed and specific. And this woman was like, no, like, let me, like, it's fine. And because she knew the ins and outs of the company, I was just like, okay, okay. well, it must be fine because she would never put in a position that would right. put in jeopardy. And so I read the script and I guess what I, I said something to the effect of like, we'll be doing a live show from there. I wanted to do the live show from there just so I could not have to take off work. Yeah. Because that's the kind of bitch that I am. I'm like such a loser yeah. rule follower. But the way it was able to be interpreted was that it was like a sweepstakes for the company and their crazy psycho about any sort of like giveaways. There must be some like FCC regulations that are like crazy yeah. intense. Anyway, so basically it was like you made it seem like we were gonna be part of this, we're not. So I was like, okay, so no, I can't just retract my statement and or cancel the trip. I'll do that. I'll cancel the trip. Like I'm gonna take a hit financially. And they were just like, no, you reach contract. So I was like, okay, the end. So did you burst into tears? Burst into tears. I literally kicked rocks, like, and dirt, and all, like, anything in my, the vicinity of me, on the side of the road, called, like, everybody that's important, hysterically cried for four hours, and then I was, like, to my mom and dad, I was, like, the scariest call to make, you know, because it's, like, they're just always so worried about me, and, like, I'm divorced, and then I became a late life lesbian, and it's, like, they're just worried, they're worried, we're, we're so worried, we're worried. Minute, but yes. And so, I was, like, great. Everything that they were worried about happened. Like, when I came out, they were, like, you're gonna lose your job because you're gay, and I was, like, mom, like, wait, wait, wait let's go into that real quick. So, you got married how old? I got married 27, okay. I think. Kind of young. And yeah. then when... We dated did, a year and a half. And then when did you realize you were gay? Um, about two months after I got separated. Oh, really? Yeah. You really didn't know. Girl, I really didn't know. But I am, I was raised Catholic. Yeah, And um, I've always had such Catholic guilt with sex. Yeah. So I just like, like, I was like, I hate having sex with guys because Jesus says so, you know? It's yeah. like, because I'm not married because I'm a whore. Like, I just, I just kept attributing, like, hating dick to just, like, God, I guess. Yeah. But, like, in a very not, like, I'm not like a bi- Clearly, I'm not a bio lover, right, you know? Right. But it was, like, ingrained in me. Yes, yes, So totally. I just always kind of thought, and I also went through a, a period where I thought people that like sex were just either had low IQs mm -hmm. um, or were fucking liars. And so I was yeah. like, I'm speaking for all women that hate sex. Meanwhile, I was a lesbian speaking to women and giving them horrible sex advice. Th thanks for the job, Cosmo. So when did the, <laughs> when did the aha... Scissor moment happened. Oh my God, so funny. Scissoring isn't a thing, but we've all it's tried not. it, girls. Okay. So <laughs> when did it, you are? When did it happen? Um, when did you have a moment? So I thought I was going crazy because I was like, I finally got the balls to get a divorce. I mean, once you're separated, people are like, I'm sure people would say, "Oh, you're hooking up while you're separated." Shut the fuck up. It's breakups are breakups. Yeah. At least, it, at least ours was. We don't have kids. Right. You know, it was like we're done. It's so a starter marriage. It was, yeah, yes. a five-year starter marriage. I was, I, I was in it for the long yes. haul. Um, but it takes a while to get divorced, you know. Like yeah, judges yeah. have to sign off and shit. So anyway, he was dating right after we got separated, and I was like, I'm gonna be wild, Taylor. I'm gonna do whatever I want. I'm gonna sleep with all these guys and just like. Eh. Yeah. So I'm out one night with my friend Taylor, who is a lesbian. I like okay. a soft s. Yes. Lesbian's too harsh, okay. I think. And she. Um, she was kissing a girl, which was fine. We were friends. I had seen her do it before. But this time I was like, no. And I got insanely jealous. Really? And I'm like, oh, I'm just being crazy divorced Taylor. You know, like crazy separated Taylor. Like, woo! So I let it go. Because <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm drunk. I Maybe I'm just, I want attention and she's yeah. my friend. I'm confused. And then it was like plaguing me. So finally I was like, listen, I think I want to make out with you. And she was like, no. <laughs> you're straight you're just getting like divorced from a man and this is like and I feel like that's a, a story that a lot of uh, veteran lesbians yep. have dealt with yes. where they're like I don't want to be your experimental gay moment and exactly. then I'm going to fall for you and you're going to leave me and you're not really gay so leave me alone exactly Yeah. so she was like I also lose interest super quick and like I'm one of your closest friends right now yeah, like, I was let's like, not screw up that yeah. uh -huh. so I'm like okay okay but then like once I told her that it was like out of the bag and so she and she had admitted that she always thought I was very cute had a crush on me but like again was like well she's straight married so just right. as a friend 
And so then we were on a trip together for a work thing that, because she, that's how we met was through work. She shot videos for my blog, which like doesn't exist anymore, but it still kind of does. Um, <laughs> it, 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 there's like maybe a picture from like five years ago. Okay. Go check it out, Um <laughs> But we were on this trip, and so I basically Harvey Weinsteined her and made yes. her watch me shower. Now, are you kidding me? Why would what? anybody ever want to like be like, watch me shower? I'm like, close your eyes, don't look at my bod. But no. We were on a trip together, sharing a room, because I booked it when we were friends. Right. And But then I, so anyway, so that weekend it was like, let you want to do this? Let's just do this. So we like let our inhibitions down and became lovers. Now, now <laughs> were, you, were you drunk at all? I mean, girl, always. Okay. I mean, I'm always drunk. Not right now, because I had to drive. did you feel like you didn't know exactly what to do? Okay, so at first it was like, so... Okay, I've never told this story before. So our first kiss was like we were out together and we were like going to all these places. And so finally she's like, okay, I like you. Like, I want to kiss you, right? Yes. But she like wouldn't kiss me until we got back to our hotel room. So we were like out of the club and she wouldn't kiss me, but was like teasing me. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of like we get close to me, but like refuse to kiss me. Oh my God, I'm getting butterflies just thinking of it. Oh, me too. This is like the glue that will keep us together when we hate each other in yeah. like, you know, five more years. Um, and then we, like, got in the Uber, and I was like, can we, like, please kiss now? And she was like, no, not in the Uber. But, like, was still, like, her face was, like, right up to my face. And I was like, I'm dying! Yes. And then we, like, finally got back to the hotel, and then we, like, had this, like, passionate makeout session. So it was just, like, making out, but, like, it had been so prolonged, like, in that night that it was, like, so fucking hot. Yeah. And then, then in the morning it was like, oh, God, now what are we going to do? And then I got scared, like a 13-year-old, and I was yeah. like... Like, what do I touch? And, like, my mouth goes, where? So yes. I was like, yo, baby step this with me because I'm wicked scared. Like, I've always been scared of sex. I'm super duper scared of this sex. <laughs> so she was very patient. And yeah. it was like, you know, it was a long, it, it took me a long time and lots of different, you know, um, Learning moments learning, and angles. Learning moments and angles to get it down. But I did realize, like, okay, so I'm totally a lesbian. Because, like, I like this, and I never liked sex. So. Good but it, for you. Yeah. But it was scary as shit. And so now you guys have been together for how long? Like, four years. And, um, so she, you were together when you got the firing. Together when I got the firing. And, but that was the thing, so I call my parents. But, like, my parents were all about the divorce, and then... My mom was the one that outed me with Taylor. She was like, are you in love with Taylor? I went home for a weekend. I'm like, Pfft. I'm like, I'm, I'm in my 30s. I'm going to lie to my mom about someone I yeah. like. And I was like, yeah. And my mom, like, went into cray-cray mode. Like, I thought I was going to get grounded. And I was like, wait a second. I'm in my 30s. I pay my own rent. I paid for myself to come home. Like, she's not the boss of me. Yeah. So my mom and I got in a massive, epic, like, high school style fight. And um, then I was like, just stay out of my love life. It's like, not your fucking business. So then we just didn't talk about it for a while. And then finally, like, six months into my relationship, my mom was like, I'm just so sad you got a divorce. I really thought you would be happy. That's why I encouraged it. And I was like, I am happy. And she was like, well, you never tell me. And then my dad was like, is it because you're happy with Taylor and you're not, you, you and mom don't talk about that? And I was like, yeah. So we all cried. We stayed up to like the sun rose talking about it. They Aww. asked all sorts of inappropriate questions like, do you use like strap ons? Because that's horrifying to us. And so of course I lied to them. No, I, I actually don't because I was raised by those parents who made, like, I would feel so. So you don't use strap ons sinful. ever? Not even for like a, a special occasion? No, I mean, all we, right. we, bought, we bought one. I was I was gonna give it a try. It was just so fucking scary. Okay. It was scary on her. I was really scary in it. Th these chunky thighs in like a harness. That's just like not sexy, you know. Plus, I thought we were getting away from the dick. That's Why would we get away from the dick? dick? Okay, this is what I've always thought, and I'm not to judge anybody. No, sexual. do you? Do you? But girl. I used to think that lesbians who solely used a strap on to get off. I feel like you're kind of. Having your cake and eating it. <laughs> I agree. Because I'm like, a guy who's gay doesn't go, let me put on my chest plate with my tits so you can come on my tits. I mean, maybe some guys do that are like drag queens. <laughs> I don't know. But I always thought, like, they're not adding a female part. Like, they're dealing like, with what God gave them. Like, hey, I bought you a fleshlight. Yeah, go. so, like, if, if, you know, like, it should be enough with your bodies. But 
again, to each his own, it's a huge industry. Whatever makes people happy. Right. Whatever. I don't give a shit. Yeah, we're Puritans over yes, in yes, our Yes, yes, yes. But I mean, that's just interesting. Okay. Um, but finally, my parents, like, came around. But they, like, it, it, listen, it's baby steps. And that's the thing, too, is, like, people, I, I think you hear either people's parents are like, oh, my God, we knew, thank God, finally. Or right. their parents are like, oh, my God, pray the gay away, never speak to us. And it's, like, some horrific, like, tragic, terrible story. Yeah. But I think there's a lot of us that it's a smack dab in between. Well, where, I think for you versus other parents. You know, when you mostly with well with other friends of mine get you know like where you hear the story of the guy that says like and then I finally told my mom mom I'm gay and she's like I knew it for like yes. like I think with your story there was no hinting along the way no. so it was probably a really big shock that yeah. she just had to like adjust her mind to you totally know? and so. I like gave her that grace period you know because when I talk about it, I want to talk about it honestly but I always feel bad because people are like your mother and I'm like no she's the fucking best like she probably well she Probably loves Taylor more than she loves me. She mm -hmm. loves her new daughter, Taylor. Um, my mother-in-law lo loves me more than my husband. <laughs> and maybe I should stop telling him that. Yeah, I might give him a compliment, you know? I'm like, like twitching Like, I'm here. not worried. Like, if something <laughs> happened, uh, Jenny's still You're waiting me for lunch. Yeah, like, right? Not a problem. Same with the bed. But that will be, like, ride or die, Taylor Donahue for life. Um, yeah. But, so, I kept it. So, it was, like, six months really bad with my family. Then it was like six months, kind of like they were baby stepping into it in a good way. And then I'm like, I have to go on the air. It's been a year. My audience, yes. I kept this a secret for years. So they're like, you're divorced. Are you dating? What's going on? And I was like, Merp. I don't know. And I share everything with my audience. So I felt like I was lying and I hated that feeling. And my whole brand is like, be authentic, be you. Right, and I'm right. like, I'm like fucking myself over right now. So I came out on the air and it was so, ugh. I thought it, it felt so good, and then I immediately burst into tears and said that was the biggest mistake I made. I should have not done that. I should have kept it a secret. And how much time between coming out on your show and getting fired was Like there? a year. Uh -huh. And I remember my mom was really worried, and she was like, I really worry that you're, this is going to threaten your career. And I was like, Mom, that's kind of like no, illegal, not, right? No, yeah, not at all. And especially and nowadays. entertainment industry, mm -mm. if anything, it probably gave me an extra year. Like, I'm hoping to come out as a lesbian when this show starts to tank a little. <laughs> Well, girl, work for me. I'm, I, I will <laughs> bless. I will be here to be your uh, lesbian, late life lesbian. Just mentor. like when I need, like, oh, I need a fucking ran out of stories. Better start <laughs> fight with my husband. husband and getting a girlfriend because I got to come up with some more juicy scoop. Literally, work for Taylor and Taylor. <laughs> um, well, that's great. So now, so then you started your own thing. Yeah. So um, yeah. So we started our own thing. We were, like, going to start looking at other... We had, like, meetings at, like, other, you know, big... When you say we, you mean your manager? Me and my manager, yeah. yeah. Um, we were gonna, we went had, like, a meeting with CBS. Stassi was amazing. She set me immediately up with her podcast company. Yeah. I called her hysterically crying. And she was like, she was like, girl, like, it's, it's going to be fine. But I had an opportunity to kind of do, like, a serious type-based business on my own. And I was like, yeah. that's kind of cool to be your own business owner. And I might as well give it a shot now. And if it yes. fails, then I can, like, like no harm, no foul, like, go, like, back to, like, these big conglomerates, like, yeah. media companies, and try to figure out a way to get right. back on air that way. Um, so we launched the Taylor Strecker Show January 2000 and, I guess, 18? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of, it's in its infancy. But um, the audience used to always say to me when I meet them at Sirius, we only pay for Sirius for you. So yeah. I was like, girls, Show up and prove them, or prove me right, or prove me wrong, actually. Yes. And so rather than, like, $20 a month, it's $6.95 a month. Mm -hmm. It's 33 cents a show. I've done the math. That's, like, nothing. Okay. Um, it's two hours of daily talk. And basically, the slogan is, and it's the truth, I'm giving you back the show that was taken away from you. Yes. And me. So if you loved the Taylor Strucker, or if you loved Wake Up with Taylor yes. on Sirius, then come over to the Taylor Strucker show. But then I also have the podcast, because I am not you know, blind to the fact that podcasting is the future. Mm -hmm. And so Taste of Taylor started off as kind of just like a sampling of the live radio show. Mm -hmm. And then we just relaunched in October as like an interview type podcast. But like, I'm hoping that like, I don't know, maybe even give that a facelift and make it more, I don't know, maybe I'll just make it just like yours. Because <laughs> I love yours. I think yours is phenomenal, really. Well, you know, it's it's every. I think everybody takes a little from everybody. Yeah. So it's like, yes, yeah, sometimes you'll get, you will catch someone that clearly copied you, and you're like, well, that's life. I'm not gonna not put out my genius ideas right. to the world. So it's like, you know, as a saying would say, there's enough in the universe for everyone. Just listen to my show first, okay? I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> But right now, Taste of Taylor yes. is like an interview-based yes. show, which is great and fun, but I want also to be able to grow the audience and like have my own 
storyline within my podcast, which right, right now is actually like lacking. So okay, yeah. Well, I'm so glad you came. Um, and you told everybody you made so we know what it is. I don't know if there's anything else you want to um, just follow me at Taylor Strip. Okay. This was so fun. Thank you for, you gave lots of juice. You really delivered. Thanks, girl. I gave new juice. This is a good one. Oh, good. Thank you for Hi. having me. Thank you for coming out here. I'm glad it worked out. Me too. Okay, cool. Um, 